country craft corner how in the world are you guys doing today it is so good to see you again and thank you so so much for stopping back by to see what i'm up to and what i'm up to today is first i'm going to tell you about my dad and his total knee replacement surgery and how well he's doing and then we're going to make a nine loop funky bow and a quick bow topper for the lantern that's going to sit out on my front porch for fall I have, I have one for it, but I've used it for like two or three years and I want something new this year and I haven't bought anything. Everything is from my coffers. I haven't purchased anything for this little craft, but I thought I would like to bring you a craft. I haven't for, as you know, I've been out of town for the last 12 days, 11, 12 days. I came home on a Thursday afternoon, late afternoon. And I've been here a couple of days trying to recover and recuperate. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm still pretty tired. I'll be, I'll be honest. It was, it was a hard work up there. I have to tell you, but it was, you know, of course it was for my dad and, you know, I wouldn't have been anywhere else. So let me back up and tell you about his surgery. He had a total knee replacement on his right knee. He has been struggling with it for several years on and off and then had, I mean, he's been to the doctor and had, you know, cortisone shots and whatever in his knee and finally had x-rays done. Well, he'd had them done one time and then he had them done again about six months ago. No, I'm fibbing about, well, it is about four months ago now. And uh, it was bone on bone. He had bone on bone and the doctor told him, with as active as you are, we're gonna go ahead and do a total knee replacement. So that's what he did. That's what he prepared for. And y'all know all the hoops you have to jump through, all the tests you have to take, you know, chest x-ray, blood work, MRSA test, COVID test. Uh, a week before he wasn't gonna have to have a COVID test, a week before his surgery. But then the week of his surgery, or the week right before, the weekend before his surgery, it came he out. needed to have a, a negative COVID test before, you know, they'd allow him into the hospital. So, and he had to isolate. He had to isolate the whole weekend. I was going to go up the Sunday before his surgery and decided no. So Chris and I actually drove up the morning of the surgery and picked him up at his place at about seven o'clock and got him over to the hospital. And um, he had gotten himself a hospital bed, had that brought in. And I actually slept in his bed for part of the time. And then we switched because I didn't think he was getting good enough sleep. And I want, and he could get up and down. I'll get back to that. But anyway, I'm not going to yammer on about this forever and a day here. But I did want to kind of explain, you know, what happened or what, you know, the procedure. So uh, I was the only one allowed in the hospital with my dad. No other family members could come in. The only other family member that I switched out with for just a few minutes was my cousin Todd, who was, as you all know, a pastor. And he went in and he prayed with dad before dad was taken back to pre-op. So uh, we had to have our temperatures taken. We had to have, you know, badges put on. And he and I could not be in there at the same time. So I actually came back outside. Uh, nobody was even allowed in the lobby to sit in the lobby and wait. So we waited outside. Uh, once my, well, I'll get back to that. But once my dad was taken back to surgery, I came back out and we were, you know, we all just sat, sat outside. <laughs> so, but I was able to go to pre-op with dad. One family member was able to go to pre-op and, you know, they just started his IV and asked him questions and did all this stuff. And, uh, you know, so he was wheeled back to surgery and I came back outside and it was really neat. They gave me a little piece of paper with a number on it and they had a big board in the a uh, big, you know, board with all of the surgeries that were taken off, taking place, um, clicking off, you know, and it, it was color coded and I could tell exactly where dad was in the process, pre-op, you know, surgical surgery, recovery, so on and so forth. So we kept an eye on that all day long. 
And when we saw he was, and we watched all the babies, all, tons of babies were born. I think we had, we saw seven babies and then a set of twins, something like that come out. So, uh, but I had some family members outside waiting with me and uh, Stacy's mom and dad and Todd and then Chris and then Stacy and I were texting all day. She says, I'm going to be the gopher. If anybody needs anything, anybody needs food, coffee, whatever, I'll get it, <laughs> you know. So, of course, family, as always, as always with my family, I'm so grateful to my aunt and uncle and to Todd and to Stacy and to everybody else in my family who reached out uh, to me via text. Uh, Dad had to isolate after surgery, too. And the doctor said nobody, nobody. was allowed to come see my dad unless they were totally vac fully vaccinated, um, even if they've had if, even if they'd had COVID. Doctor's orders, I took the doctor's orders and relayed that to the family. And so, you know, uh, for, th for the first month or until at least he gets his stitches out, that's the way it has been. Uh, you know, so uh, please don't talk to me about vaccinations or the vaccine or whether you've had COVID or haven't had COVID or what your thoughts are on that. I'm really, I'm really not here to have a discussion about that. So please, any comments that are made in that vein, I will, I will delete. I will delete. We are not going to go there. I was just telling you what the rules from his doctor and nurses were. And I followed those rules, you know, because I want to keep my dad safe, you know? So, but I, I really don't want to have a conversation about that and, and will not, will not keep those comments in. So please, if you have thoughts about those, please keep them with you and your family and don't put them on me, please. <laughs> it was hard. It was hard to do that, and but I did it, you know. So it's like a little pit bull, you know. Uh, and so my dad did swimmingly through the surgery. Uh, I was called, I would, at, at, during recovery, I, when I, we saw him go to recovery, I waited about 10 or 15 minutes and then I walked in to the, a lobby, you know, to wait for a call or to see the doctor. He said, I'll either come out or I'll call you. So he ended up calling me and said, dad did great. His x-rays look fantastic. He's doing, he's doing great. He's out of, you know, he's waking up, he's doing fine. And then he said, a nurse will call you when he's being taken to a room because we do want to keep him here for one night. Now, my dad had a thought that he was going to come home that day. I'm glad they kept him a night. Not that he couldn't have. He probably could have because, of course, he was up. Anyway, so I got, I waited until the nurse called. So the nurse called and I went up to his room and waited for him to get there. I beat him to his room, waited for him to get there. And uh, they had him up within an hour of being in his room or less. Um, they came, they got him up, they stood him up. He walked like a champ, did fine. His doctor called him a beast. <laughs> because he was so strong, you know. So uh, I ended up leaving the hospital, I don't know, around five or six that evening. I went back to his place and put sheets on the bed and uh, fixed up the, the hospital bed, got all my stuff in and, you know, got myself settled into his place and um, was all ready to go back the next day to the hospital. And I was talking to dad on the phone and overnight, uh, I was like, you know, I want to come on in and, and I'll come pick you up. I'll come up and get you around, right around noon because he had a big PT session in the morning and he had to pass all kinds of criteria in order to get, be the, in order for the doctor to let him out, he had to pass all kinds of criteria. So uh, the nurse said, no, 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 no. She can't come in today. She said, we will wheel you out. So even overnight, I couldn't even go in to see him. So... Uh, you know, because of the Delta variant and because all of their ICU beds were taken up and it was running rampant up there at the time, you know. So anyway, so we, we got dad, got him home, got him in, got him settled. He is doing great. Uh, the PT has been coming every other day. So is occupational, physical therapy, occupational therapy. And then a nurse came, uh, I saw each three times when I was there and they were, they were coming. The uh, occupational therapy signed him off, said he's doing great, no problems. And she walked in Monday and last Monday and said, looked at me and she says, how long are you planning on staying? And I said, well, my plan was to stay till the 29th, which is the day my dad goes back for his post-op. And she said, Psh, 
She said, he's, he's ready. He said, just give it a few more days and then you go on home. She said, he's doing great. He's getting around fine. Absolutely no problems at all. And so we told the nurse and we told the PT and they were both like, yes, he's fine. No problems at all. Go home. He'll be fine here. So I came on home Thursday evening. I came on home uh, after his physical therapy, made sure everything was situated and I got out of there, you know, and he was ready for me to leave. He's ready for his independence. You know, he's ready to get back to his independent life, which I don't blame him. I was ready to come home. I missed my bed, you know, <laughs> And uh, the comforts of my own home, of course, you know, and uh, we had a great time. And as I had said in, in the video with Stacy the other day, uh, her mom and dad and she came by many times, brought food, brought conversation and laughter. And uh, it was wonderful to have them there. And, uh, you know, now and again, I'm all caught up on my college football and my pro bowl and my, um, my uh, baseball because my dad's a big sports fanatic and we watched a lot of sports uh, and uh, really enjoyed some of the college. I really like college games. I really like college football. Anyway, he's doing great. And uh, thank you guys again so much for all of your thoughts, your prayers, your love. I appreciate every single one of you so very much. And uh, uh, so does my dad. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you a million times over. <laughs> All right, uh, the reason I'm going ahead, I'm not sure if I'll get this up on Sunday evening or Monday at some point, but I wanted to go ahead and bring you a video at the beginning of the week here. Chris and I both are going up on Wednesday to take Dad for his post-op appointment. Um, and so we'll be gone on Wednesday and uh, back Wednesday night late, probably. So I probably will have another video for you this week on Friday. And that may be us putting either the reveal of the of the uh, front porch, probably the reveal, probably the reveal. You guys, I'm I'm pretty tired, as you all can imagine. You know, um, running up and down the road and caring for family members and whatnot is is kind of taxing, and I'm kind of tired. Also, uh, I wanted to tell you that Chris has surprised me with a little bit of a trip. Uh, so we will be leaving town again mid October ish. And uh, going back to Florida, as a matter of fact. And it looks like our friends, Barb and Dawn, will be coming with us and meeting us down there. So uh, we're going to have a big time there. So I will be gone. <laughs> I'm sorry for about another week. But, uh, you know, sometime in the middle, middle, middle of October to celebrate my 60th birthday. Chris is doing that for me in my 60th. So I appreciate that. It's been, it's been a heck of a summer, you know? <laughs> Anyway, all right, uh, let me go on here and change, turn my camera around, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut my ribbon and get that done, and we're going to make a quick nine-loop funky bow, and then a hopefully a pretty quick lantern topper swag for this lantern. I'll explain everything about that when I get my camera turned. It's so good to be back, you guys. I will be back, as I said, a couple of times this week, and probably, I don't know, the next week or two with something I don't have a lot to share with you, but I'll share what I can. If you have questions, please leave them for me and I'll be glad to answer them. All right. All right. Let me turn my camera and I will get started. Thank you too, to all of you who left Stacy and I, your sweet comments. Oh my goodness. We appreciated all of them. Uh, we had a blast doing that. It was so much fun. It always is with Stacy. We have a great relationship as you all can see. And I uh, just love her to the moon and back. Thank you, Stacy, for coming on my channel. Thank you, sweetie, for making your beautiful little Christmas tree and your uh, chicken pot pie casserole. Oh, my word, you guys. That, guy, that is so good. But anyway, let me turn my camera. I'll be right back when I get my ribbon cut. And we'll get started on this lantern bow topper. All right? Be right back. Okay, dokie, everybody. I'm back. And I have all my ribbons cut at... 22 inches long. As you can see, I'm using three different types of ribbon. I'm using a kind of a check and then a solid blingy one and then this pumpkin one with uh, sparkles in it. It's very pretty. This one and this one, these two came from perpetualribbons.com. Bobby at perpetualribbons.com. Take a screenshot if you want. There's always a, a link in the description of 
my videos for Bobby at perpetualribbons.com. I honestly pretty exclusively use Bobby now because she spoiled me rotten and be, with her ribbon because it is always beautiful ribbon. So highly recommend Bobby at perpetualribbons.com. I don't know where I got this one. I think it might have been AC Moore. This is an older ribbon. I'm not positive that Bobby doesn't have that. I just don't have, I didn't pick up a roll from her from my coffers there. So, uh, but anyway, we're going to make a nine loop funky bow today. And I have three strips of each type of ribbon. Three, six, nine, three, nine strips equals a nine loop funky bow. All right, so this is the easiest funky bow that I make, and you can always find uh, how to make a funky bow if you want. I have a Bow Making 101 uh, playlist that goes through all the funky bows that I make along with a tiered bow and a round bow as well. But anyway, we're gonna do this very quickly. We're gonna uh, make fold this in half and fold our first strip in half. We're gonna set ourselves up a pattern as we go through and make this bow. I'm going to fold the first strip in half and, and flatten it out and go to six inches on my measuring tape and pinch it together at six inches. And each loop will be six inches big, if you will. And I'm going to go to that back tail and I'm going to twist that back tail. The only reason I do that is to, for one, separate the tails and for two, to bring the pattern to the front, at least at this point, it will get all messed up and, and twisted up within the bow. But at least at this point when I'm making it, I know that it's headed in the right direction and in the, both in the same direction. Here we go with the second ribbon in our, in our pattern, folding it in half, going to six inches. This time I want to turn the loop part down from center, center being my thumb. My thumb is Picture that as the center of the bow, and again, going to that back tail and twisting. Now we go to our third piece of ribbon in our pattern, hold it in half, go to six inches, point that loop up from center. Again, my thumb, this thumb being the center of the bow, and go into that back tail and twisting. And I'm just gonna follow that same pattern throughout the bow. So I'm going to actually speed through this because I don't want this video to be long with talking about my dad. This video is probably a little going to be longer with me making a bow. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through the rest, just picking each each ribbon up and changing di directions of the loop each time I add a new loop. And by the time I'm finished talking, I'll practically be finished the bow. <laughs> so I am going to continue on through the pattern, as I said, changing the loop each time I add to the to the bow, adding it side by side, turn it down from center, side by side by side. Not piling it underneath, not piling it on top, but side to side to side. Okay, I'm going to do these last three. I'll be right back. Okay, there I am adding in that last piece, that last loop up from center, turning that tail forward and now I have one piece one more piece of ribbon over here and I'm going to add, actually add that to the bottom actually kind of to the back bottom of the bow pinching it together and those are going to become tails okay now I'm going to take a pipe cleaner I'm going to lay it beside my thumb here and wrap kind of center it on the bow there and wrap the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. And I just thought of something else that I neglected to do. I'm gonna cut one more piece of ribbon. I need one more piece of ribbon and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. Hang on, that about does it for that roll of ribbon. Let me find the center of this. And I'm going to uh, add this to the back of the bow. And this is what I'm going to use. This piece of ribbon is what I'm going to use to tie the entire bow topper onto the lantern, okay? So I'm gonna add this to the back of the bow. Let me take that pipe cleaner off for just a second. To the back of the bow, right like that. And that way, with this on the back of the bow, I can pull the bow tight and up against the, up against the front of the lantern. Okay, now, 
top around the bottom around the bottom and top around the top using this hand as resistance and getting these fingers up really close i'm going to move this hand around and really squeeze tight and twist 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 okay now all that's left is the fluffing you can see some of the tails are coming up and and adding themselves into the body of the bow and that is absolutely fine and dandy for that to do that. And because I don't think I'm gonna be adding anything else to this bow, it's pretty, it'll stand by itself here. I don't think I'm gonna be adding foliage or anything into the bow and you'll see why. I may pull some leaves over into it, but I'm not gonna be gluing anything with this. Again, this is gonna be sitting on the front porch Okay, so there we go. There's a nine loop funky bow. I'm not gonna fluff it too much more now. I'll wait till I get it on to the lantern, but isn't that pretty? Look how thick it is. That That's a pretty combination of ribbons right there for a funky bow. Okay, now let's set this aside for just a second. This is a very old lantern of mine that I've had for, she was, several years, almost since I moved into this house. Chris did pay, uh, spray paint it for me the last time I made it up uh, into this beautiful cherry red. I believe it's a Rust-Oleum paint from Home Depot is what he used, indoor-outdoor paint. This I uh, bought this lantern at a um, country store called Dottie's Den here in uh, over in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, off of Lafayette Boulevard, for those who might be interested, Dottie's Den is a beautiful little country store over there. Uh, you know, of course, I don't know. The, the original red of this lantern was more of a pinky red, and I wanted it to be more of a vibrant red. And it was, well, not only was it pinky red to start with, and then it had been out on the front porch for years and, been, and was faded. So this paint held up beautifully. Uh, in the summer sun. So we're, and I'm, and I'm going to leave all of this pretty greenery in there. This is kind of like a fern and I'm going to leave it in there because I just think it looks super pretty and I will add some fall foliage, foliage to it. <laughs> and you can see I have this, this is kind of a indoor outdoor candle too. This held up beautifully out there. This is really the only decoration I have on my front porch anymore. I've kind of taken the, the, you know, my little red wagon in. It was just too much, you guys. It was just too much out there. So this is what I'm going to be working with. And I will, and I took all the glass out of this lantern because I really like how the greenery comes out. Did that the last time we did this. So I'm going to keep that, keep the, uh, the glass out of it. I'm just going to close it right up. Let the, let the greenery stick out of it. And I may add, I'm going to get the, uh, lantern swag done first or the lantern topper done first and then we'll see if I want to add more. So let me put that out of the way for just a second and pull over a couple of things here that I think I might like to use. I thought I would like to use this, but I may use it as a background. I got this, this was $20 a piece. I kind of don't want to use this because I think I could use this for something else in years to come that I almost feel like it's too nice, if you will, to put on a lantern that's going to sit outside. So I think I will pass on this. I think I, I won't use that. I got them out because I thought I would, but I don't think I will. Instead, I think I'm going to use one of these. One, two, three, four, four, five. This is the way that I make most of my swags, you all. Let me put you down so you can watch me work a little easier here. All of my swags for my lanterns and my swags for, for, my, for my wreaths even. This is the way I make them. Uh, I think this is easier and it just makes for a pretty, pretty, very, very, very pretty lantern. Now I do wanna add some greenery to this, to the mix here and I just, you can see I've already used some pieces of this. So I really don't want to do too much with this other than I am going to cut it apart Oh, too. Other than I want some of the green element up in the swag. 
So this is all I have left of this. So I'm gonna use it. So what I'm doing is turning these pieces end for end, just like this. And I'm gonna leave a hole in the middle for my bow to sit in. So, but I want it to be a little bit longer. So I'm going, that's why I cut it apart so that I could control the length of the, the uh, swag. So again, turning them on each other just like that. And I have my secret weapon in a tie wrap and I'm gonna start tying them together. I really want the, the leaves to be a little bit closer on the first two here, like that. And I want these stuck out a little further, but let me put just a tie wrap around this to hold this together. And I'm just going to layer and layer and layer and build a swag. Okay. And then I want to add two more pieces of this. I want to make it a little longer. Okay, now let me see about this greenery. Such a pretty wispy kind of a fern. I got the fern off of Amazon, you guys. It's, I probably have it in my Amazon shop. And I'll do one for this side too. Okay, now we need some more fall, don't we? So I picked up some of these, aren't they pretty? Again, out of my coffers. Cut that off. Okay. Again, my Tie wraps are my secret weapon, you guys. They help me out in so many different ways. I don't know how I crafted without them before. Honest to Pete, I don't. Okay, you guys. Well, that's about what I'm going for, something like that with the bow in the middle. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the bow in the middle and see what else I can do with this. So I'm going to take the back of the bow and I'm gonna cut the um, pipe cleaners down because I don't wanna use those to tie the bow onto the swag. Instead, I wanna use a tie wrap because it does hold it tighter and more securely. And I wanna feed the tie wrap underneath the pipe cleaner. Like that, and turn the bow over. Make sure I have the 
I'm going to use to tie the bow onto the lantern up like that. Kind of above the tie wrap. The tails below it. And tie the ribbon or the bow right on to the swag. Pull it tight. I'm going to move the lantern over here. Stand up for a second. Move the lantern over here. And we're going to tie this swag. right on to this lantern. And see that I have the bow kind of on the, the left hand side the way I usually like it. And I'm not worried about the how it looks right at the moment on the front there. And I'm just going to tie this into a square bow left over right pull it in really tight and then make your left loop go around it and come in behind and there we go And I'm going to take my scissors and do just almost did it wrong. <laughs> Dovetail. Now work with it a little bit here. Just bending it kind of to make it hug the lantern a little bit. I love it. It is super pretty, y'all. You know, sometimes when I start these things, I'm like, oh, I don't know how this is going to work out. But most times it works out pretty well. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to worry about pulling anything up into that bow, like green or anything. I think it looks really pretty as is. Just like that. Look at that. I think I will add some leaves and berries maybe to the bottom. Let me put these over here. I have a one pumpkin. Okay. I think it looks super pretty, y'all. Okay. Now for the tails. I think I'm going to leave them fairly long and I'm going to do them at an angle, one a little bit shorter than the next, just like that. And you put your further down, I think I will add just a little bit of some fall leaves just to the bottom there, maybe a pumpkin. On the inside, kind of peeking up through there. I 
And I have some berries. Again, all of this is from my coffers. I didn't buy one thing for this. From like that, and maybe like that. I have one more. Kind of fall does kind of look a little haphazard sometimes, doesn't it? So, I mean, you know, leaves kind of going here, there, and everywhere. A little much. <laughs> That's a little much. Do have one more of these. Come down here and follow this greenery down. Here we go, y'all. I think that is going to do it. But I think that's really pretty. Oh my goodness. What y'all think? I think that's going to be lovely. Yeah. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for that. <laughs> I love it. All right, let me turn around here and do a little bit more chit-chatting with you. And then we'll end this one. Okie dokie, you guys, I'm back. And I think this turned out to be super pretty. Look at this. I'm sure I'll still do some tweaking to the bow and everything, but I, I'm just uh, thrilled with how it worked out. I tell you, with, with fall and Christmas, you guys, the sky's the limit. Go ahead and let it be big and large and in charge, you know? Yes, for the rest of the year, we might need to, you know, settle our decor down a little bit, but fall, you know, it's starting to ramp up. And then Christmas, poof, it goes crazy, right? <laughs> uh, this is this turned out really pretty. It turned out just like how I had in my mind's eye, maybe a little better. <laughs> so I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled with this. I'm sure you guys have probably been wondering, probably been saying to yourself, uh-oh, Arlen went and got herself a set of nails. She went and got herself a set of, of acrylic nails. And no, I didn't. These are Color Street, you guys. These are Color Street nails, which are just fingernail polish strips is what they are. And these are a French manicure from Color Street. Huh? Don't they look pretty? Now, if you get up real close to them, this is the first time I've ever tried it. But if you get up real close to them, you know, you see some, some imperfections there on that one, especially. I made a little mistake, but fixed it pretty well. But these, my nails are not all that long, but you can make them look longer by moving the white back down your nail a little bit, back back further on your nail. So aren't they pretty? They turned out really pretty. So I think I'm gonna definitely be ordering myself some more French manicures. We'll see if they last as long as the other uh, Color Street nails that lasted the whole time I was at my dad's. I mean, I had one set on the whole time I was at my dad's and that was over 11 days, 11, 12 days. You know, they usually last about two weeks and I just took these off last night and redid them with this and today is Sunday, it's Sunday afternoon. So, you know, don't they look pretty? Color Street. Also, I right now them. I'm using Scott Singer. You know, my buddy Scott Singer, his mama is selling Color Street now. So I'll give you her name and contact information in the description box. So if you wanna get in touch with her and grab yourself up a little French manicure set of Color Street nails, uh, why not try it, huh? They look super pretty. They really do. They look like they are acrylic nails. And uh, I was able to look them, make them all look the same length. And, you know, it was pretty. They're, they're, I love them. I really love Color Street. All right. So that is it, you guys. I know I don't have any new questions, so I'm not even going to look. I may have a couple of pictures with Mischief with Maverick. Haven't done, haven't seen Maverick in a while. He's walking, almost running now. I'm telling you, he is... He has something else. They took him to the fair the other night. So maybe I can add a couple of pictures of him at the fair where they live. So, all right. And I'm not sure I'll be able to show you this in place outside. I may take, go ahead and take it out there. I don't have the rest of the front porch done, of course, but I may take it out there and set it on the, on a, uh, on the little table where it's going to live out there. So, 
Again, thank you all so much for stopping in here today. I missed you guys terrible while I was gone. I missed doing my YouTube channel. I'll ask you to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, even watch my subscriber count click up even while I've been gone. Thank you so much. I'm so close to 32,000. I'd love to, to see that 30, click over to that 32,000. Pretty quick here, and then on to 33, 34, and 35,000. I, I, you know, I appreciate every single one of you. I really do if you do subscribe and then click you like and then share. Uh, it helps my channel out, it helps my channel grow. So thank you guys in advance for that. And I'll go into my final words. Thank you all so much for stopping in here and I hope all is well with everyone. For those of you who might be struggling and suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll probably see you Friday, you guys. Probably not till Friday because I do have we do have to run up uh, and take Dad to the doctor and, and everything and have other things going on this week. So probably Friday. I'll be back on Friday. But with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, thanks for watching. Y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.